How's it going everybody? My name is Jim and welcome to Restoration Projects. This video is going to be the restoration of this old pedestal grinder. Now this particular one was manufactured by US Electrical Manufacturing Corporation. They were based out of Los Angeles, California and from what I could find online they were in business from about 1918 till about 1948. There's not a ton of information online and most of everything that I found was on VintageMachinery.org's website. Based on how this grinder looks, I'm thinking it's an earlier version, possibly 1920s to 1930s. Um, this was a production grinder, and as you can see, they have a lot of nice features, such as the swing-out door. The reason for having a swing-out door is so you can switch out the grinding wheels or buffing wheels, and you don't have to remove a bunch of bolts to pull off the guard. Um, in a shop, production is the name of the game, and getting things done as fast as possible is what's going to keep you profitable. Now, before we tear it apart, let's do a test run. Now that we know that it runs, we can start the teardown process. Now, this grinder is a little unique in that the guards are actually mounted to the base and not to the grinder housing itself. So a lot of newer grinders you'll see out there, the guards actually bolt directly to the motor and then that whole assembly will mount to whatever the pedestal you, uh, or whatever you're mounting it to. Where this setup here, they have mounted the guards directly to the pedestal. Um, it took a little bit of finagling to get it undone um, because you had to take it off and you had to take the motor off and then the guards, but to get to the bolts under the motor, you had to use a ratcheting wrench and you didn't have a lot of throw so it took a lot of time to get that apart. You may notice there that that pedestal looks like it has a tube going through it from side to side and what I'm guessing, and this is just my speculation, is that this may have been for a belt driven uh, grinder at some point. A lot of older grinders were driven by belt so they could either be hooked up to a separate motor or to a line shaft because you think back in 19 hundreds, electric motors were expensive to make because so everything was, had to be made by hand. And a lot of shops still had line shafts, so it was cheaper for them just to hook up a belt to a line shaft than it was to invest in a motor. Now that we have the grinder off of its base, we have it over here on the workbench, we're able to take a better look at it. And you may notice that there's two oil fill caps on the top here. And what these are is this is to add oil to lubricate the bearings. Now, a lot of bearings you think of for machinery have grease in it. Well, this is designed to have oil in it, and the reason being is you see these little holes right here at the bottom, and these are the drain holes. So you would add oil, and that oil would go in, lubricate the bearings, and then eventually find its way out to these drain holes, and it would drain out on the ground, which, yeah, it would make a mess, but the added benefit of that is as that oil is leaking out, it is also taking with it all the contaminants that are a byproduct of running this machine. So all the grime, the little metal flakes that will eventually come off of the bearings, all that stuff gets carried away and washed out. So it's actually a kind of a self-cleaning system. Now, taking apart the grinder itself, there are a total of eight bolts, four on each side, and once you get them apart, you can get the sides off. And you just use a wooden mallet there to kind of knock them loose as they are pressed and fit. And here you can see the entire thing broken apart here. So you can see the shaft there with the bearing. And those black things on the side there, those are felt rings that go on there to help prevent the oil from leaking out the sides. And it keeps it in that bearing housing. Uh, there are three on that side right there. And over here there are two on this side. Now as far as motors go, this is a pretty simple design, but it's effective and it gets the job done. You can see there inside the housing, uh, we don't see any marring or scrape marks from where the motor may have been damaging itself as it was running. That's usually due to bearings going out, causing wobbles in the shaft. We do see quite a bit of grease in there, and you can see right there, that's the housing for the bearing. And you can see off to the right, oil would come in from the top and drain out to the left. Um, right here you can see a better view of that, so we're going to pick this up, and there's the drain hole on the bottom, and you can see a little bit of light going all the way through there, and then up here, this is where the bearing sits, and the oil gets dripped in at that fill cup there, it gets sloshed around, and that felt keeps the oil from going 
out either end of the shaft and hopefully the majority of the oil will go straight down the drain hole there and onto your floor. Now we need to get the shaft cleaned up and to do this we're going to take it over to the lathe here and since these bearings are pressed on there and I don't want to damage them I am sealing them up with masking tape here and this is going to keep the dust and grime off of it and what I'm doing is I'm stabilizing on one end with my live center and I have in a three jaw chuck and then I'm just going over it with some emery cloth here to try to get off some of the rust that's built up over time and then use a file here because there are a couple high spots from when some person went in there at one point in time and used either pliers or vice grips to grab the shaft so they could torque on or off the nut that held on the grinding wheel. So we're having to get those cleaned up. This part right here is a Dremel that I have mounted to my tool post and it is held in there by a 3D printed um, mount that holds the Dremel in place and I'm using a scotch Bright pad. And as you can see, that scotch Bright pad is just touching right there on the edge, but it is leaving a nice surface finish. And I can see that black part right underneath the grinding wheel. That's my vacuum cleaner. Um, I'm using the hose there just to try to catch any of the grindings that come off of here because I don't want them to go onto the ways of my lathe and cause more wear on it. So we're just going back and forth here and cleaning it up, getting all the rust and the grime off, and then we'll be uh, ready to do the other side. Now we just take out the three jaw chuck, flip it around, stabilize it in here with the live center, and we are pulling off that felt there because the less oily material we have on this to collect the grinding dust, the better. And I'm just wrapping it again with uh, masking tape. And same thing, file off the high spots. Same thing on this side, somebody to use like vice grips or something to try to stabilize the shaft while they're taking that nut on or off. And then we just go back to it with a Dremel and this is a really handy attachment to have on a lathe. Uh, you can download the file from 3D printing this um, mount there from, I think it's thingiverse.com, and it's free to download, and you just print it on a 3D printer, and it holds the Dremel perfectly fine, doesn't have any vibration to it, and it's great for just cleaning up uh, round parts or any part that you can throw on the lathe for that matter. Now that we have that shaft lined up, we have turned our attention now to painting the stand. Uh, the paint that I've used for this project is Rust-Oleum Charcoal Gray Enamel. I do a lot of the projects with this color of spray paint as I find it matches a lot of the older Rockwell Deltas from the 1940s. I like the way it looks and it holds up really well. Um, I do use all of my tools and they do get dinged and scratched and this paint actually holds up pretty well so I'm pretty impressed with it. Here we are just installing the guards on each side of the motor there and it was a little bit of a process to get this thing bolted down because there isn't a lot of throw for your ratchety wrench to um, turn the bolts for uh, bolting down the motor to the stand. But once we got the motor bolted down and everything lined up the rest of the process went together really fast. So right here I'm just finishing up the back side of it and the color I chose to go with the motor went with a traditional black. I felt that that contrasted nicely to the gray and would be closer to what you would see from that time period. Now we're just finishing the bolt down process and for how I'm going to power this, I do have a VFD that I ordered for this and I'm going to wire it up. It is only a one horsepower motor so this VFD should power it no problem. Um, you can find these VFDs off like Amazon or eBay and they run right around $100. So. Um, one thing, my camera did die out on me, and so I did not get a video of this thing running or the completed product, but I do have pictures of it. So, first picture here, if you want to pause, is the nameplate. And then this is what it looks like finished up there. So, put the grinding wheels back in along with a buffing wheel. We have the VFD hanging off the front. Probably not the best for the dust that will be produced by this, but it'll work for the little amount that I use it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you got something out of this video, please subscribe.